Uh, let's talk about some of the smaller clauses that you might run into um, or that actually you will run into. You will run into usually an indemnity clause. Oh boy. Uh, attorneys, tell me how to spell this thing. Indemnity. Is that right? Indemnity? Um, that's a big word for, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, it basically just means who gets sued. Meaning, the indemnity clause means you promise that this book is your own and you are not plagiarizing it. Um, you promise that, you know, that, uh, that you are not using anyone in it in a way that could, you could be sued for libel. Um, you are um, basically doing everything legal and on the up and up. And if you aren't, we can pass the buck along to you. And if we get sued, it's you getting sued. Basically, it's a standard thing um, in a contract like this. But it is something to be aware of. Yeah? Is that the clause that says, like, the little phrase, no, um, any, any characters are, ficti fi are fictional or used fictitiously? Yes, that thing. Mm -hmm. So. Um, you also have um, kind of a copyright clause. All this should basically say is the publisher will register a copyright for the work in the author's name. For whatever reason, that's what the, the publisher does. Uh, it costs them like 50 bucks. They will register the copyright for you. The really bad contracts exist out there which try to right grab on the copyright in which they say, the copyright in, um, characters and series title will be owned by the publisher. Um, and that is something to be very careful of. Granted, if it's something like 39 Clues, where they've come to you and said, we're doing this thing. Do you want to be part of it? Then you're entering into a work for hire agreement, and that will be expected. For example, my um, contracts with the Harriet explicitly state the copyright belongs to Bandersnatch, which is their company. They don't belong to me. And it spells out the characters and situations and things belong to Bandersnatch and not to me. You would have the same contract if you were writing for George Lucas. So then you can't actually write your own, like you couldn't write anything. Like I could not write my own Wheel of Time books. That is correct. And um, that would be very standard. It is not standard if it is what we call an author property that you have brought to the publisher yourself and it will be most everything that you guys will work with. Um, yeah. What about like creative copyrights like Creative Commons? Like I know you do this with Lowbreaker. Right. That you have to approach with the publisher directly. Um, they don't love it, I'll tell you that. But um, various publishers are going to have their own quirks for this. For instance, Bain has no problem with it. Um, and in, in your Bain contracts, you will probably be required to put your book up, not required, but strongly, heavily suggest that you should put your book up on the Bain Free Library, where they put up on their website all the first books of every author's series, basically, for free to read an e-book um, to try and get people hooked on the series. And they kind of, they rotate those sometimes too, so there's like other books. Um, it's a great resource, and Bain also does this thing where if you belong to their subscriber, subscription to their club, um, they've got this like publisher club that's actually pretty neat, and you get arcs of all the books. You get the ebook um, to read early when it's put up on the bay, you know, they'll, they'll put it up early for you, and then they'll send you an arc, and you're paying whatever a certain amount a month to just get all of this. So it's kind of a nifty thing they do. And I don't know how that looks in the contracts because I haven't ever signed a Bain contract before. Bain is an interesting company. Tom Doherty, who runs Tor, owns 50% of it, but is a silent par partner because it's his competitor. <laughs> um, so, all right. What else am I missing? I forgot to bring my contracts in to look at them, um, but I think we're hitting all of the, um, the big things. We'll go into the littler things, like um, there will be a due date. There will be a reversion of rights. Um, mm, let's see. Is there anything else in these, both, these things? Due dates, um, by the way, in publishing tend to actually be pretty flexible. They put this on here, but they're used to working with crazy creative authors. Um, and if missing your due date is, you, is, is a bad thing, but it happens all the time. So don't stress it too much. 
Um, as a newer author, it serves you very well to hit your due dates um, so you can have a publication date, but yeah. Oftentimes in their offers, they'll, continue, um, they'll include a marketing plan. Um, and you can get that into the contract if you want to. Uh, marketing plan is, you know, they're required to send you on a book tour of a certain number of cities. And you can actually get it written into there that they're required to do that. Or they're required to do such and such thing or such and such. All of this stuff, you can, you can get anything in the contract that you want to. The question is the push and shove, whether it's worth what they're going to require of you to put it in there. But you could get a marketing plan. If they, when they make offers, they love to throw out marketing plans. And then they love to not put them in the contracts because they talk big in marketing plans. So, yeah. Kind of a tangent to that, tangent question to that. When they fly you around, do they? They pay. Oh, OK. Well, I mean, yeah. my question is, like, do they fly you first class? And why do they do Or is it kind of? How much are you earning them? <laughs> um, there are authors who have in their contract that the publisher is required to fly them, fly them first class if, wherever they go. I'm not going to say if that's me. Um, because I am forbidden by contract to talk about whether or not I get certain perks that other authors might not get. Um, there can be NDAs in here. There can be NDAs in here. Um, but um, you know, certain authors require first class. Uh, you're better off not asking for it until you are a big enough deal that they won't laugh at you. <laughs> And when you're a big enough deal that they won't laugh at you, then they're probably offering it anyway. Um, but yes, they do pay for everything. Uh, they put you up in hotels um, and things like that. And there can be NDAs in here. There's an NDA in my, um, my Robert Jordan contract. There's not NDAs in any of my other contracts, really. Um, but there are certain things that you know, are, 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 I've asked to not make pu comp public knowledge in my contracts. And you may have things like that. Like if your royalty rate gets boosted up, they may say, don't tell everybody. And so stuff like that could, could exist in there. There are certain perks you can get where they're like, don't tell everyone else this. Um, so um, you don't remember what reversion of rights is? We talked about it already. It should spell out when you get the rights back so you can sell them again. All right. All right, a uh, few th things on short story contracts, just in case you're interested. Usually what they're buying is first serial rights. Um, it, could, it could say first North American serial rights. It could say first world English serial rights. Um, basically, they get a chance to publish it in their magazine first. And then they will usually um, have an exclusivity period, meaning um, frequently it's 12 or 18 months. They get uh, to have the story exclusively for that time. And after that, you can, you can sell second serial rights if you want, or second, third, fourth, fifth. I mean, if a magazine wants to do reprints, there are some that do reprints. You'd be free to sell as a reprint to a magazine. Um, you'd be free to put it up in your website. Um, you'd be free to put it in an anthology. All of these things after that exclusivity period. Uh, usually, they're going to pay a certain number of cents per word. Um, one cent on the low end for, um, for kind of more semi pro zines and things. Up to the highest is usually around 25 cents um, per word. Uh, 25 cents per word, uh, yeah. Um, for some really professional publications, I think Tor.com pays 20 cents or 25 cents a word. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it's one of the other magazines. Tor might pay the standard five to seven. Um, but five to seven is what you're going to see mostly for the prosines. A couple of them, they'll make like try to make a big splash by offering this, but those will usually be web-only sorts of things. Like I think SciFiction was paying like 25 cents a word back when it existed, um, and so you know that's what they'll do, and they will um, usually say up to you know a certain amount, up to five grand, and then like you know it could be. 20 cents for um, up to five grand, and then after that, one cent per word there thereafter, or to just a maximum of five grand, and anything after that, you just get five grand for it. Um, am I missing anything in, in that's different in short story contracts? Occasionally they'll ask for electronic if they have a. Electronic oh yeah, yeah, they will ask for electronic. Very common to ask for electronic. Um, 
but um, usually their electronic rights, um, the clauses will require that it be bundled. Meaning they don't get to sell the short story by itself from you. They have to bundle it with the rest of the magazine. They can sell the magazine in short, in electronic form for, uh, for a fee, but they can't sell just your book. Um, that's not always the case, though. For instance, Tor.com has the right to sell the story on its own. But Tor.com puts them out for free. Um, so it, it's, it's, it's not big money when they then put it on Amazon and, and kick back 25% to you or whatever. Um, so, all right. That's, your, that's basically your contract thing, what you should be looking at when you're um, signing a contract. Uh, go immediately to make sure they're not grabbing too many of your rights or your copyright. Make sure the advance is reasonable. Um, not paying advance is usually a sign of a somewhat um, um, newer publisher, how shall we say. Uh, Joshua says he won't work with anyone that doesn't pay in advance, period. Um, they've got to pay in advance. He won't even sell, like, to my friends um, miniatures rights without making them pay 100 bucks because he says they have to put advance forward to make sure that they're serious. Uh, that's one of just jo Joshua's laws. Pay us, even if it's just a little bit for, for simple rights, pay us and we'll listen. If you come to us with no money, then, yeah, you're getting our name for free uh, attached to your product. So... Um, be wary of that.